Once upon a time, in central Italy, there was an obscure culture that fought with and against the Romans. These ancient peoples were the Etruscans. The Etruscans preceded the Romans by centuries. The earliest evidence of a culture that is identifiably Etruscan comes all the way from 900 BCE. This culture is called Villanovan, a descendant culture of the Urnfield cultures of Bronze Age Central Europe. It is believed that it was the Etruscans who introduced ironworking into Italy. That it was them who around the 8th century BCE united the villages of Rome into a unified city. A decision that would cost them dearly near 6 centuries later. The peoples of Etruria have been studied extensively to try and pinpoint where they came from. So far, genetic evidence suggests their origins are from central and northern Italy, being almost indistinguishable from their Latin neighbors to the south. Their writing system and alphabet would have been familiar to the Greek world as it seems to have derived from the Euboean alphabet from Greece. This was used extensively all throughout southern Italy. The Latin alphabet was also a descendant of Euboean. However, their language was as foreign as it could get, and to this day, it has only been partially deciphered. The consensus among linguists is that Etruscan was a pre-Indo-European and a Paleo-European language, and it is closely related to the Radic languages that were spoken in the Alps. It was during the 8th century BCE that the Villanovan culture peaked its territorial extent. Three main factions branched into their own cultural and political entities, Etruria, Povali and Campania. The Villanovans had strong military traditions, much like the Romans and the Greeks. This would have surely made them eager for new conquests. It is after the 8th century BCE that the orientalization period of Etruria begins. Greek, Egyptian and Middle Eastern traders reach Italian shores. The Etruscan peoples are quick to adapt to their foreign goods. Eventually, it's the Greek style they seem to enjoy the most. By the end of the 6th century BCE, the Etruscan aristocracy has fully embraced Greek culture even going as far as adopting their military styles, myths and even mixing their own gods with the Greeks. But though they seemed to enjoy their life with the finest goods the foreigners brought, death played a critical role in Etruscan society. At the height of Etruscan power, elite Etruscan families grew very, very rich through the trade with Celtic world to the north and the Greeks to the south, and they filled their large family tombs with important luxuries. The family tombs could even look like fully-fledged houses filled with the everyday items its occupants would need in their afterlife. And the richer the family, the more lavishly decorated these would be, especially the tombs themselves. Most Etruscan writings we have to this day are funerary writings. Judging by them, the Etruscans would put as much emphasis on the fathers as they did on the mothers. But one thing is for certain, the family was the most important unit in Etruscan culture. The artisans of Etruria had begun to imitate Greek art by the 6th century BCE. Both motifs and myths would have inspired the Etrurian artisans. However, their traditional art styles were still popular. Particularly strong in their tradition were figurative sculpture in terracotta, particularly life-size on sarcophagi or temples. Wall painting and metalworking, especially engraved bronze mirrors, were also usual and common. And let's not forget the Etruscan pottery that is also iconic with its black colors. Politically, the Etruscans were heavily decentralized and the power would fall among the most important families of each city. They held a system akin of chieftains rather than a centralized government, small monarchies culturally connected among themselves. But above these families and chieftains, there were the men of the gods. Religion was extremely important. In fact, almost nothing could be done without the consent or will of their many gods. The Roman rituals to read the entrails of animals before battles was performed and inherited by the Etruscans. 
It is believed that the Etruscan government style changed from a total monarchy to oligarchic republic as the Roman Republic during the 6th century BC. Though perhaps not all Etruscan cities and tribes followed these steps. By the late 4th century BCE, the Roman advance saw the brave Etruscan hoplites on their path. Unfortunately for the Etruscans, they were ultimately unable to halt the advance of the Romans, and by the mid-3rd century BCE, all Etruscan cities were under Roman rule. Their culture would live on for two more centuries, at which point Roman citizenship was granted to all Etruscans. The language slowly faded, and most of the traditions as well. Certain Roman gods lived on through the Romans, like Minerva or Neptune. Haruspici, the act of reading animal entrails, was adopted by the Romans, and even some elements of architecture, like the circular houses, could be seen in small Roman shrines. At the end of the day, the Etruscans made Rome, only to be destroyed by it. They are a fascinating culture with so much yet to uncover. But are the Etruscans simply another footnote of history? Well, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do subscribe for more. I've been Wolf, and I'll see you guys on the next one.